Hello gorgeous peeps and welcome to a yet another sphincter clenchingly thrilling episode of Techspert Weekly, the only weekly tech news show that's hotter than my pants. And that's honestly not some kind of humble brag or boast, it is actually hotter in the studio than Satan's taint right now because not only is it 28 degrees outside but I also stupidly bought this randomly massive bloody studio light to help illuminate my already very very pale visage. But yeah, at least the benefit of that is I don't have to worry about buggering off abroad to Ibiza this year. I can just sit in my studio and basically turn bright red in a matter of minutes. But anyway, we really need to crack on with the show before I actually pass out from dehydration. So jingle me. Techspert Weekly. We really should be sitting here with a Malibu or something. I haven't thought this through at all. Uh, but anyway, let's start this week's show as we do pretty much every week with yet another f***ing Motorola launch. I mean, let's face it, at this point, it would be heresy not to. So brace yourself for the fresh new Motorola Defy, a durable smartphone that would happily headbutt a grizzly bear or wave its willy a Dave Bautista. That's how proper tough it is. Motorola's dual sealed body design means that the inner casing is wrapped in a second outer casing, kind of like slapping two rubber johnnies on at once for extra safety. You've got a Gorilla Glass Victus screen which is seriously scratch resistant while Motorola has drop tested this phone at a height of 1.8 meters onto a steel surface. The Defy is IP68 water and dust resistant and can happily survive extreme temperatures between minus 30 degrees and 75 degrees centigrade plus extreme humidity. So I might just about f***ing survive in this studio then. And the Motorola Defy has also apparently endured strict vibration and rigidity testing too. So just like your mum then. Of course, you already knew that was coming. Again, just like your mum. But yeah, during the uh, the press briefing, the Motorola dude did say the word rigid quite a lot, which was slightly awkward and also kind of horny. And butter my arse cheeks and call me a crumpet, you even get a bloody lanyard with this thing. Classic. But dive inside the Defy and you'll smack face first into some pretty basic specs. You've got a 6.5 inch HD screen and a Snapdragon 662 chipset power and proceedings, although the 5000mAh battery should merrily keep you going a day or two between charges. Uh, oh yeah, and I've also got in my notes here, Motorola impressed us all by guaranteeing that the Motorola Defy would be upgraded from Android 10 to Android 11 at some point. Yeah, I had to kind of scrape the gunk from my ears at this point just to make sure I definitely heard right. Yes, it does come with Android 10, so yeah. Yeah, if you're hoping the Motorola Defy is going to ever get an upgrade to Android 12, well, you're probably shit out of luck unless you're very, very, very patient. Uh, but Motorola is guaranteeing three years of security updates at least, and you do have full support for Android Enterprise as well. As for the camera, you've got a 48 megapixel primary sensor with that usual quad pixel tech for 12 megapixel photos, plus 2 megapixel depth sensor and a 2 megapixel macro lens, my favourite. Woo! And the Motorola Moto Defy will cost you 279 quid here in the UK, and your choices are black and green. And we were also treated to yet another phone launch this week, courtesy of Honor, who certainly isn't just moping about at home with a tub of Hagen Doss and a mixtape of Ronan Keaton songs after splitting from its long-term love, Huawei. In fact, the fresh Honor 50 series looks suspiciously like the Huawei P50, which was recently teased online, complete with those enormous round camera bumps that seem to stare at you like the blackened, soulless eyes of a cartoon minion that took one too many knocks to the noggin and transformed into a murderous psychopath, hell-bent on snuffing out as many lives as possible before slashing its own throat in defiance of the twisted, godless society that created it. The 6.57-inch Honor 50 is joined by a bigger and more expensive Pro model, both of which sport a 120 hertz screen. You've also got them powered by a Snapdragon 778G chipset with a 5G modem built in. So certainly pretty good news for gamers, especially if you're going to bag that Pro model because it comes with dual vapor chamber coolant tech. And while the standard Honor 50 has a bigger 4300mAh battery versus the 4000mAh effort on the Pro, that Pro model does support ridiculously powerful 100 watt fast charging, given a full charge in just over 20 minutes. Mind the Honor 50 ain't exactly a slouch here, with 66 watt fast charging also supported. As for that slightly terrifying camera tech, where you've got a 100 megapixel primary camera sensor, you've also got an 8 megapixel wide angle camera, a 2 megapixel macro camera, and a 2 megapixel depth sensor, obviously. But of course, the best news is that Google services are A OK here on the Honor 50 phones because of that Huawei split. So you've got Google Play support, all that good stuff, no worries. And if you're tempted by an Honor 50 handset, well, both the Honor 50 and the Honor 50 Pro are available in a handful of different color choices, including a shiny, bright red, and green. Only available right now in China, but will be emerging here in the UK very shortly, as well as other 
areas too. So lotion at the ready, full unboxing and review coming at your face. But was that all this week for the tech shenanigans? Was it bollocks? Because we also saw a launch from Monvoy, the fresh new TicWatch E3 Wear OS smartwatch sporting that same beefy Snapdragon Wear 4100 chipset as found in the TicWatch 3 Pro. And by TicWatch 3 Pro, I of course mean the TicWatch Pro 3. I kind of f***ed that up, but can I be bothered to re-record it? Can I ask? Despite sporting very similar specs and features to that TicWatch Pro 3, the TicWatch E3 comes in at a much nicer price, namely 179 quid here in the UK or 199 dollars slash euros if you live on some other bit of the world. Now this Wear OS smartwatch packs all the usual features including full media controls, notification support, Google Pay, yada yada, plus lots of fitness shenanigans if your daily workout happens to involve more than lifting a pint of Stella to your lips. You got 24 hour SPO2 tracking as well as heart rate monitoring, plus a new 30 minute HIIT training feature which will have you sweating faster than a priest in a playground. The TicWatch E3's workout mode supports 20 different types of exercise, I didn't even realise there were that many, as well as all the usual sleep tracking, stress tracking, all that good stuff. And that 32 gram plastic frame is proper light, but seems durable so far in my testing, while the silicone strap is also comfy for intensive exercise. And the TicWatch E3 is water resistant, so you can take it for a paddle, no problem. And the TicWatch E3 also boasts a built-in microphone and speaker as well, so you can directly interact with the likes of the Google Assistant. Is it hot in here, or is it just me? According to Wikipedia, Hot in Hera is a song by American rapper Nelly from his second studio album, Nellyville. Yeah, that is indeed a, a, a Nelly classic right there. It's getting hot in Hera, so take off your pants. The performance has certainly been smooth so far from the TicWatch E3, uh, just in the few days that I've been testing it out. And the battery life's okay, not too bad. You'll just about stretch through two full days if you're not using all of the features, not hammering that exercise stuff non-stop. And that is with the always-on display uh, active as well. But this isn't the final retail model, this is a prototype model, so I don't want to give it a full in-depth review. But yeah, if you want a lovably light Wear OS device that's absolutely packed with all of the features you could possibly hope for with a price that won't absolutely skint you, then it definitely is worth a look. And last up, before I go have a nice lie down in front of a bin lorry, this week also saw the launch of the new Beats Studio Buds, some noise cancelling true wireless earbuds that won't actually force you to take out a second mortgage. In fact, they cost just 130 quid here in the UK, the same as the Huawei Freebuds 4, and a bit cheaper than Samsung's efforts. They certainly look good for the price, very compact, and early reports reckon that the sound quality is very good as you would expect from Beats, but you do have to contend with some dodgy issues like a ropey transparency mode that doesn't really work and a lack of proper in-ear detection. And I, I might try and review them at some point, but frankly, I've had enough true wireless earbuds stuffed in my head to last me a lifetime, so I might just pass on that one if that's all right. And that's seriously about all the news I can friggin' cope with right now because I do feel like my brain is starting to boil inside of my skull now. So that means it's time for the part of the show that's about as family friendly as the annual teabag and Olympics. It's viewer comments. Viewer comments. <laughs> uh, so we've had some great feedback on last week's episode as usual of course. Uh, so Moo S or Moose uh, says, just in time for my lunch break, I was worried I'd have to eat in silence. Uh, to which Jim replied, sometimes silence is golden. True. Uh, but of course, it's not breakfast time everywhere in the world when Techspert Weekly goes live. So, uh, Ataku Injuri says, just in time for my dinner. Good thing I got to watch something posh while eating. Not not quite sure, but like posh? Wait, are you sure you actually watched the show and you didn't just like watch the adverts and then click on something else? I think I've only been called posh once in my lifetime and that was when one of my Mac and mates up north caught me putting mayonnaise on my chips, uh, which I got a bit of a taste for for some reason. Uh, he basically said scrape that shit off and smother it in gravy, otherwise just piss off to London and never come back. And if only you could see me now wearing coats in winter and drinking craft beer like a proper southern c uh, next up, David says, Great content as usual, Chris. With keeping up the Kardashians finished, are we going to be treated to standing around with the spurts instead? Is it really finished though? I mean, come on, I can only imagine it's really done until those oxygen stealers run out of cash for their island orgies with other celebrity cockwombles and then all of a sudden it's straight back at it again, fresh new season, what a treat. I pretty much guarantee it's going to go on for a good few more seasons. I mean, let's face it, the last one's probably going to be all of them, about 50 years in the future in some posh retirement villa 
place in LA all desperately trying to stay relevant while also desperately trying not to empty their bowels every time they fart. And oh yeah, last week I also bizarrely had to emphasise the fact that I don't endorse murdering orphans in their sleep and then harvesting their organs from their still twitching bodies in order to fund my tech habits, um, naturally. Uh, and Phil says, thanks for clearing that up. I was of course genuinely concerned about the potential for an uptick in orphan killings. And uh, DVDV says, speaking of not funny orphan jokes, what do you call an orphan taking a selfie? A family photo. Bum and indeed Tish. Um, you know, I've got a couple of other not funny orphan jokes. If uh, you've got the time, we've got a few minutes, why not? Uh, what kind of flower do you buy an orphan? Self-raising flower. And what kind of beer do orphans drink? Fosters. Of course, that last one is a complete lie. Nobody likes Fosters, not even orphans. Uh, next up, Ian Hopper says, Techspert, you were f***ing Rokombu. Why did you change it? Yeah, no, lots of people seem to think that I owned the Rokombu channel. I was actually part of the Rokombu team, uh, which ran the website, and then also the YouTube channel on the side as well. Uh, some other c*** got all the ad revenue off it. Hence, I eventually got my spurt on. And next up, Mohammed says, do you think that OnePlus is going to survive the whole bad cameras thing that most reviewers on YouTube brag about? I mean, well, I'd be very interested to see if this whole partnership with Hasselblad actually does result in better photo and video capture. Um, give it a bit of time, you know, let that magic work its uh, wonders and hopefully, fingers crossed, they'll be up there. I don't think they'll ever be competing with the likes of, you, you know, your Samsungs in terms of uh, the actual camera quality, but it would be good if OnePlus kept on going strong, especially now they've expanded their portfolio back into that mid-range market as well as the more premium flagship style stuff. <coughs> uh, so hey, what's up everybody? It's your boy here, Uncle Spurts, with uh, a little something extra for you. So I wasn't tidied away all my kits, slipped into my Jimmy Jams, got myself a nice hot steaming cup of cocoa uh, with a healthy dose of whiskey in there, obviously. Settled down with a box set of some others do have them, ready to chill out, check my phone and oh, look at the news. Oppo and OnePlus are apparently merging. Hip hip. Huzzah. I couldn't have done it a couple of hours sooner, could they, when uh, I could have integrated it neatly into the video rather than doing this awkward sort of voice or whatever the hell this is, I'm not even sure. But I thought I should probably address it because people were saying, oh, that'll be the end of OnePlus then. And of course, I just said, hopefully OnePlus will keep going for donkeys. Um, if you're wondering why I'm not doing this to camera, it's because I'm literally dressed in a My Little Pony onesie and frankly, mankind is not ready for that kind of hot action just yet but I will put some sort of visual up here I've got no idea what um, I'll figure this out probably tomorrow morning because I'm very tired but anyway yes uh, from what I can glean from the news so far very little has actually been discussed on the lo the, the logistics of this merger uh, it basically just sounds like Oppo and OnePlus are going to be sharing more resources uh, which they already do anyway because they are sibling companies after all um, so you could probably just expect uh, OnePlus and Oppo phones to look even more similar in the future hip hip as are hopefully it won't mean that OnePlus will be dix ditching Dixon my god I can't even speak anymore ditching Oxygen OS and going fully Color OS instead because that would be a bit shit. Um, I really do like Oxygen OS definitely prefer it to Color OS but we'll, we'll have to wait and see, basically. Nobody knows anything right now. There's certainly no one who seems to be actually reporting on the news anyway. So anyway, there you go. There I've said, said to the bits, you don't need to be in the comments like, ha, I think you'll find. OnePlus is dead. Screw you, Uncle Spurb. Uh, right, back to the show. And next up, Baldy Head, a hey, man after my own heart, or shiny skull at least, uh, says, I had to look up who Freddy was as it was Rod, Jin and Matt when I was a kid. And then another chap replaced Matt after he left to shove his hands up Sutty's bum. That is absolutely scandalous. I had absolutely no idea that Freddie left the band and then Rod and Jane were apparently seeing other men afterwards as well. The harlots. Uh, next up, Henick says, uh, still waiting on you to drop a YouTube studio setup, Uncle Spurt. I did actually do a uh, sort of swid or uh, studio tour of sorts in another Techspert Weekly episode. The reason I haven't done a proper studio tour like other YouTubers uh, tend to enjoy doing is because my studio is literally just this corner of our old converted garage which has basically turned into a massive crap dump but you know i do i do have the uh, the gigantic light now so that's that's lovely and uh, next to bry says trust me i was iffy about deep fried mars bar but it's so good yeah no, i don't know there's something about 
deep fried sweet things that just doesn't really sit well with me like deep fried meat deep fried cheese all that good savory stuff i'm well up for but yeah the sweet candy stuff not too sure but you know next time i'm up in bonnie scotland after i've had a couple of pints of buckfast i'd probably you know be willing to give it a try why not and next up fuzzy koalas uh, which is a great name by the way uh, says what's probably the most sh phone that you've reviewed uh, that's really friggin hard I mean the absolute worst of the worst I, I, I would have wiped from my memory with years and years of alcohol abuse basically it's back in the day you started reviewing smartphones in like 2011 or something like that so you know there were lots of Android gingerbread uh, pieces of shit coming out every single week in fact it would have even probably been uh, Android Froyo back then I guess and yeah, there was just an endless shit stream of these things. They were all basically the same, just horrible, massive, weighty blocks, tiny little low-res screens, and they were the resistive screens as well, the ones where you had to properly stab them as hard as you can for them to actually register anything. Which, to be fair, once you got absolutely fed up with them, was actually pretty damn good therapy. I also remember uh, back in the day, because Samsung used to open its bowels and unleash a fresh, hot, steaming pile of Ace phone on us at least a couple of times a year and they were always bloody dreadful. And Samsung has definitely never really been able to do budget phones particularly well and that was oh, just oh. And also back when uh, Acer was in the smartphone game as well, uh, some of those early models were about as enjoyable as testicle torture. And then of course you had some smartphones which were just hampered by terrible software like uh, the BlackBerry Z10, which was the first BlackBerry 10 OS smartphone just not fun to use at all and of course the amazon fire who could forget jesus christ although at least with that one uh, when it pissed you off you could just press a button and then you'd be able to bitch and mourn at an amazon rep uh, any time of the day 24 hour support great stuff particularly good at 2 a.m on a, a sunday morning you stagger back home from the pub a bit wankered and feeling a little bit lonely but anyway i digress um and next up Khaled says uh, i bought a oneplus 7t two years back and ever since then, I've watched your videos to check which phone I should get. Uh, okay, cheers, my dears. Much appreciated. I was expecting a, uh, I bought a OnePlus 7T two years ago on your recommendation, and it's a heap of shit. Thanks, asshole. Uh, next up, WolfCub8 says, I'm thinking of getting a new phone. Should I get the OnePlus Nord or the CE version, the core edition, which I only just unboxed and reviewed? Uh, leaning towards the CE because of the better battery life. Jesus Christ, lots of actual tech questions this week. I'm not used to this. I'm starting to get a bit of a sweat on here. I don't think it's just because of the fact that it's 35 degrees in here. With the core edition, you've definitely got better battery life on that thing. Uh, I struggle to get it lower than about sort of 25%, even at the end of a very long day. Uh, lots of screen on time. So if you do spend a lot of time on your phone, that's great. Headphone jack as well, of course, if you're a big audio fan. Uh, but then, of course, you do have slightly lesser performance. But I did find it was fine for everyday shenanigans, even some light gaming as well. Has to be said, though, the Core Edition's camera is very basic indeed. Um, so I'd, I'd say it's basically a toss up between what's your priority? Is it the camera or is it the battery life? Uh, next up, Gavin says, as you love the Spurt Army, I do, I do. Uh, will you go to China and get the Xperia 1 Mark III for us as it looks to have been released there? If not, can you just torpedo a bottle of Lambrini for our entertainment. <clears throat> oh God, oh. No, seriously, I can't even say the L word without sick jumping up my throat, basically. Yeah, because of that stuff and white lightning, I've got quite a sizable memory gap uh, back between the ages of about 18 and 22. Whereas these days, I like to think of myself as a much classier breed of alcoholic. Uh, next up, Vivek says, I'm not here for tech news, I'm here to witness you spurt. Um, well, that's probably just as well, to be honest, mate. Uh, KB Toy says, thoughts on the Huawei P50? Uh, I mean, there's not really that much to think about so far other than when is it actually going to come out? Uh, is Harmony OS actually going to be a proper rival to the likes of Android? What kind of apps are we going to find on there when the P50 does emerge? And of course, naturally, what have those camera guys actually been smoking? And yeah, the Honor 50 series obviously supports very similar design to the P50, but I don't think we'll be able to glean too much from that to what we're going to get with the P50 because the specs always tend to be very, very different. The camera tech should be completely different as well. You pretty much guarantee super premium hardware. Uh, it's, it's all about the software side of things and also where the phone will actually come to market. Uh, next up, Martin says, Hey man, can you make a video about the king of new phones with an LED notifications light? I'm about to pay tons of money for some new phone with a notifications light. That is definitely an oddly specific request, Martin. I've got, I've got to admit, I don't think anyone I've spoken to before has put a notifications light uh, quite so high up the old priority list. And I'll be honest with you, I'm probably not going to have time to do a roundup of the best smartphones in 2021 with a notifications light. 
Uh, but just to make it up to you, here's a picture of an alpaca that looks just like Boris Johnson. And next up, uh, Hariashu says, Hey Spurt, I'm thinking of buying an Xperia 5 Mark II. Do you know if it will get Android 13 or at the very least 12? Well, those were definitely the rumours uh, that I was going to get at least two uh, OS updates overall. But I don't think Sony ever actually officially confirmed that. I seem to recall they were just rumours. Um, however, you can expect the Xperia 5 Mark II to get at the very least Android 12. I'd be shocked and appalled, frankly, if it didn't. And I will get in touch with them just to clarify the whole uh, software update. Uh, situation certainly for the new models as well. And I suppose that's one good thing about uh, Sony releasing fewer smartphones these days. This was just a handful compared with the huge slew they used to do every year back in the days. The fact that they should hopefully be able to support them a lot better than they used to. And now not only are we running out of time quite badly but also my underwear is getting decidedly moist and not in a good way. So I better make this the last comment of the week. Uh, so Delta says the music in the background is distracting. Right, well, I'm glad we ended on uh, such a, a high note there. And uh, next week, next week, oh, what's next week? Well, I'm going to be bringing you my full Sony Xperia 10 Mark III review. So if you're a bit of a Sony fan, well, uh, that's good news, I guess. And crap, 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 of course, I've just realised I completely forgot to do the Sony Xperia 1 Mark III update. It's the Sony Xperia 1 Mark III update. Ah, uh, yeah, bugger all as usual. It's the Sony Xperia 1 Mark III update. Also next week on TechSpot, I'll be bringing you some hot embargoed content for. Uh, also got a update for my best budget 5G smartphones 2021 roundup and also my best Oculus Quest games roundup. And then next Friday, as usual, take my hand in a purely platonic fashion and let me lead you down the alleyway that is Techspert Weekly. I promise nothing bad will happen to you or your bottom. In the meantime, thank you so much for joining me to the very bitter end of this shower of shit as usual. Have yourselves a wonderful freaking weekend. I love it, you guys so much. Bye.